Hello everybody, can you hear me? I'm just doing a quick sound check, um, I'm a little bit early, I thought I'd just start the stream and have a chat seeing that there are people waiting, so hi, <laughs> let me know if you can hear me, if there's any issues, we can fix them now before we actually start doing anything. Hi Cindy and hello Amber. Hello, hello. Let me put my light on a little bit. Better on my setup here. Hi Alicia, hi Liz. How are we all today? Get the, uh, the power cord out of my way so I don't trip over and die. We don't want that. Hello, hello. Oh, gosh, 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 gosh. How's everything going, guys? We all good? <laughs> Having a lovely day? It's another hot one here in Sydney today. Absolutely scorching. Lucky I came in and I turned on the air conditioning in my studio before I came in here this afternoon. Ah, lovely Alicia. We like a nice sunny day, don't we? It's very sunny here in Sydney at the moment as well, considering we had a ridiculously freak storm last night. Absolutely crazy. Oh, we need containers to mix things in, don't we? That would help. Yes. Alright. Where are you from, Cindy? Uh, yeah, Cindy? Where are you from? I see a couple of Australians in here. Welcome, welcome. That's always nice. I do want, I'm just getting a few little bits and pieces ready that I may want to use. Ah, oh, lovely. We love the Canadians. Good old Lisa, she's probably asleep by now though. <laughs> I'm just trying to decide if I want to put any piggies in my resin. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Thanks Joyce, welcome. Yeah, look, big um, big projects like tables, they're not uh, they're definitely not easy to do. Um, I'll switch my view to the drying tables uh, so you can quickly see how these dry, they dry absolutely perfectly. I'm very, very happy with them. Um, so what I've done this time, so I don't have to move the camera halfway through the stream again, because that was really annoying and obnoxious. Um, I've set up just a webcam. So the quality is not the greatest over here on the drying table, um, but it just means that I won't have to move anything back afterwards. So I'll quickly show you my dried results. I think it turned out absolutely marvelous. So this is the blue, pink and purple one. And you can see that because we use that glossy paint, it's already got a really nice gloss finish to it. Um, and all of those blues really stand out with those accents of purple. I'm really, really fond of this one actually. 
And now because I've moved it, I'm going to have to re-level it. So let me just make sure that we do that. Um, and my paint was behaving really strangely. So I've got some really uh, like cracked areas and they're really textured and I'm, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Um, and then we have our big one over here. Oh, this is the red one. And again, dried really, really nicely, absolutely beautiful. And we can see all of those, or I can see the beautiful golds um, and yellows in the middle and all of those reds and pinks towards the outside. Lots of depth in these ones too. And having that combination of tube paint and pigment, um, we've got some really nice areas of shimmer and some nice areas of matte or less, less shimmery paint. So I'm just going to re-level both of these. So it's going to go down. Now, I do have a little bit of warping, so even though I varnished them, you can't avoid total warping, and that's just because the amount of paint that's on here pulls the wood um, upwards. But uh, for the purposes of applying resin and everything, it's not going to make too much of a difference. Okay, so those are nice and level. Now, I'll swap back to my top-down view because it's nearly time to start. All right, let's see. Awesome, awesome, beautiful. Hi, hello, hello everybody. Yes, I'm very happy with, um, with the way that these dried. Sometimes it's hit and miss with bigger pieces. Um, now working with a wooden table where we've had all those slats glued together, sometimes what you'll get is you'll see those joins in the wood. Um, and with the two that I've done for my cafe, I've noticed that, or with the three that I've done there. Whereas this one, you don't see that very much, which I'm very happy with, very grateful for. Although this one, because it was the first one we did and it was really big, uh, I can see texture lines in there from where the paint started to dry before we get to, we got to spin it out. So that's why uh, smearing that paint around the edges, um, it's really important so that it, it blends everything together nicely. But at the end of the day, we're going to put resin on this, we're going to hide that texture and that's going to add to the effect, especially when we put glitter in the resin, um, because the glitter, which, uh, and this is an effect that I only discovered the last time I did it, um, I did a big table and I had those cracks in canyons and the glitter actually sits in those cracks in canyons. So you get like a sparkly um, cell activator or sparkly cracks in the paint uh, and it just adds so much vibrancy and interest to the, uh, to the final piece. All right, so we're bang on four o'clock here and I'm going to give this a go and start. So welcome everybody. Um, as you can see, my camera is currently facing down at my supplies. So I'll switch it over once we're ready to apply varnish and I will move all of my supplies off in a second. So I've got room to work. Okay, so for supplies with resin, uh, I'm going to run you through everything that I use to get these looking amazing, uh, finished and, you know, ready to sell, looking nice and professional. Um, so, to start with, we have our safety. So, when you're working with resin, you want to be covered as much as you can, um, especially if you have an allergic reaction to resin. I'm very lucky that I don't have much of a reaction to resin, although if I do get some on my skin, I do tend to get spotty and red. So, you always want to cover your hands as much as possible. For that, I use nitrile gloves. It does not matter which brand you use. Um, this is the one that I can get at the moment. They can be quite hard to find, especially in the large size, um, because they're the most common. And these are about $30 a box, so they're not cheap. Um, so the ones I use are Medicom at the moment. I've used so many different brands over the last six to 12 months, um, and especially during COVID. Um, but I use nitrile gloves because I'm allergic to latex. And the way that nitrile is made, um, they take the latex protein and they basically cook it further. They uh, use a chemical process to cook the latex and it cooks the latex out of the mixture. So you're left with just the glove with all the strength of everything without the actual latex protein. So nitrile gloves are a must. 
for two tables, I use six gloves, and I'll show you why when we get to it, because I double glove. The next part of our safety is our respirator. Hi, Karen. Hi, anyone else that's just joined. Um, the next part of our safety is our respirator. You want a half face or full face respirator that forms a tight seal around your mouth and nose, and you want filters that are rated for N95 or higher for organic and inorganic vapors. So resin is not an organic vapor, so you need inorganic vapors, and you want ones with these cartridges like this. A regular dust mask, like this, is not going to work. It barely even works for dust, if I'm honest. Um, so you definitely want one of these with um, the N95 filter. And this one is a 3M uh, mask and filters, and these are 6059 filters. To be honest, whenever I go to Bunnings, they've always got different ones, so I just grab the ones that I see that are rated for vapors. All right, so for safety, that's pretty much it, and I'm wearing an apron so that if I get any resin on me, I can just wipe it on my apron, and it's not going to get stuck to my clothes or anything like that. Uh, if you do happen to be allergic to resin, you can get milking gloves. Milking gloves are made for the dairy industry, and they're a long-sleeved glove. They come all the way up to your elbow, so if you are allergic to resin, and you don't want to wear you know, long sleeve sweaters and things, um, which can lead to getting dust in your work, then milking gloves would be absolutely perfect. Um, other than that, try and cover your hands as much as you can, your arms as much as you can. You could even use cling wrap, as long as it's not dangling everywhere. Uh, cling wrap and a bit of sticky tape, you know? There shouldn't be any excuse not to have the proper safety. Now we're going to get into the actual fun part with all of the stuff that I use to resin. So the first and most important thing is the resin. So I like to use stone coat countertop epoxy, as you would all know. Um, it's just the regular countertop epoxy stuff. It sets nice and firm. Um, I've had the tables in my cafe for over a year now and they still, still look amazing. You know, obviously there's a couple of scratches on there, wear and tear, but my tables are going through much more use than what yours would at home. Okay, so stone coat's holding up really well. And if you want to, they do have an ultimate top coat, which is much more durable. And I believe it's like a polyurethane varnish to go on top, um, which like a polyurethane resin. It's two parts, but you can add water to it, which is really strange. Um, but yeah, check out Stone Coat's website. And I believe I saw someone say today that they have a 25% off sale if you're in the US. So take advantage of that if you want resin. The next thing that we're going to need is mixing cups to mix everything in. Um, I really love these Pixis brand uh, cups that I get from Amazon. I get them in a pack of 100, they're about 40 bucks, and these are great. They're very, very accurate, and trying to find accurate mixing cups is very difficult. Um, the other ones that I use and that I'll be using today are these TCP mixing cups, TCP Global, again from Amazon. They have all sorts of different um, ratios and things on there, and I have just noticed something that uh, I found out on Stonecoat's website yesterday. The Stonecoat mixing cups have ratios measured on the side. So if you're, like, I can't um, zoom in on this enough, um, but on the side here, it's got three to one, three to one, three to one, three to one written up here, and then it's got four to one here, and one to one here. So basically what you do if you're filling your cup, instead of filling 50 mils and then 50 mils for a one-to-one -one ratio, you fill part A to the one at the bottom, and then you fill part B to the one at the top, and you know that it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Likewise, on the side here, you fill to part one, uh, to the first line for the double part, so if you're doing a two-to-one ratio, fill to number two here on the side, and then your part one is gonna go up to number one. So you can measure out ratios on these cups, which is very useful, and like I said, didn't know about this until yesterday. So you no longer have to eyeball, you know, your exact measurements and try and remember, oh, I poured this much. You just pour one to one all the way up to here. So again, the Pixis brand measuring cups for the smaller batches of resin. And because I'm using 500 mils of resin per table today, um, I think I only need about 400 mils. Uh, we're going to use these bigger ones. Next, we need a chef's torch. So this is an Appetito brand chef torch. I just bought this from a kitchen supply shop here in Australia. It does have a continuous button, which no longer works, so if I push that in, it will never turn off. 
yes I have been there um, because I have resin in there so yeah that's kind of frustrating um, but you just want a chef's torch that can be butane propane whatever you can get your hands on uh, and a heat gun hello hey Shante um, so a heat gun is uh, crucial to working with resin especially with tables I use an Azito heat gun and this has multiple settings on there um, it goes all the way from 40 degrees to 600 degrees and I keep it on the highest temperature setting and I use it on either one or two depending on what I'm doing um, so two fan settings really high temperature setting that's what you want all right so that's the heat sources then little bits and pieces always keep paper towel handy wiping your hands wiping your tools utensils all of that sort of stuff um, so I just cut off about 10 and that's usually enough for me I have some glitters and things to add to my resin and some mixing sticks so when I'm working with resin I prefer the dirty pour artist mixing sticks over the fluid art co ones just because these are a bit more firm and they're longer and will reach all the way into the bottom of my containers um, now when I am using the bigger containers I will use these mixing sticks that often come with the Pixis containers and uh, they're just tongue depressors, large tongue depressors. So I bought some of these at a cheap shop um, and they're really handy because they have a nice straight side for scraping the sides. Okay, the only problem I have with these is the sides aren't perfectly straight so you don't get all the resin off. Um, mixing your resin 100% together is very important and that's why some people get sticky resin or they get um, fish eyes it's because your resin isn't mixing properly so I've got glitters now the glitter that I add to all of my resin is this one it is Artisu pigment powder sparkle this is now discontinued but I am lucky to have found on Amazon you can get the exact same thing which is called unicone art crushed crystal magical mica pigment enhancer okay so that's a, a long ass thing but this is what the container looks like if you can see that um, this is what you look for on Amazon okay so those are the two glitters and the reason I add glitter to my resin is so that when if you get any little specks of dust any hairs any sort of texture oh excuse me <coughs> My voice is breaking, I'm talking too much. Um, if you get any sort of blemishes, the glitter will hide it. It will just look like it's glitter, all right? You won't notice anything at all. So uh, to my tables today, I thought I would add a little bit more glitter. And I'm actually going to do two coats of resin on these. So once this is done, I'm going to... Um... <laughs> yeah, it is a long last name. Hold on one second. Um... Shantae. Shantae's made a comment and my feed has, um, you know marked it because uh, it's a naughty word but I don't think ass is a naughty word um, <laughs> so I'm going to do two layers of resin because once you put any sort of glitter in your resin it no longer becomes food safe stone coat resin is rated for food safety um, so in other words you can put meats cheese all that sort of stuff on it for short periods of time uh, without it leaching any chemicals or anything dangerous um, into your food and short periods of time it doesn't actually specify but four hours is about the most that you can have food out anyway so I'm gonna say four hours on stone coat resin you'll be fine so uh, like I said gonna put some glitters in the base coat of resin and then do another just pure coat on top and today I am using glittered pixies uh, uh, glitter and the colors I'm going to use are Hecate which is H-E-C-A-T-E. -E. I'm going to use that for my red one. And then I'm going to use a combination of apple blossom and luminous alabaster uh, for the blue one. Now these are super fine glitters. Um, and I believe it actually says on one of them uh, what it is, but you basically search for super fine glitter. And like I said, these are from glitter, the Glittered Pixies. That's on Etsy. Um, I've ordered plenty of stuff from them before and they're absolutely wonderful. So definitely recommend them and I'm also going to add to my red table uh, some TLP Comet for that interference and I'll show you what I do with that uh, in the base layer of resin when we get to pouring then finally we come to a little bit of cleanup stuff so I always keep Dettol wipes um, handy now because these are amazing for wiping resin off everything including your hands gloves 
uh, tables, all of that sort of stuff. Um, Shelly recommended these to me, and I can't thank her enough for that. They're wonderful. And the last life-saving tool is my drill with <laughs> a mixing attachment on the end. Okay, uh, so I'll show you one of those close up. Again, got these from Amazon, and there are two different types you can get. Uh, you can get this type, which I use for mixing up my paints in the tin. Um, they create a, a massive spiral, but it can introduce a lot of bubbles. Uh, and this is the one that I got from Amazon. Now this is actually fitted with a quick change tip so you can put it in a screwdriver, in a drill driver, rather than a drill. It'll work in both, um, but it's really awesome. Let me show you, demonstrate a quick change tip if you've never seen one of those. So a drill has a chuck on the end, which you undo and open and the little bits open. This is a quick change driver. All you have to do is pull the end out and that will come out. Putting that back in, you lock it in and that's not going anywhere. So the problem I had when using a drill was uh, this bigger one in particular, because it's very heavy, kept falling out. So with the quick change driver, it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, a lot of information, short space of time. Um, and the final two things that I use are a pair of tweezers and a skewer. Okay, just keep these on hand. The tweezers can come in very handy for plucking out little bits that may fall in. Um, and likewise with the skewer. So I'm just gonna keep them off to the side. All right, does anyone have any questions about any of the products I use or wanna know more about anything that I have up here before we get started? <laughs> Karen, you're funny. Um, the quick change driver is just from Bunnings. It's just an Azito one. Uh, I think it cost me $60 for the drill. So, so easy. Uh, Joyce, the wipes, they're called Dettol wipes. So they're disinfectant wipes. I've tried baby wipes, but I find that baby wipes leave like an oily residue. And I do have issues with this at, at times that they're too saturated. So um, generally what I'll do is if I'm using these to wipe anything up, I'll squeeze them out first. I'll squeeze most of the moisture out and then wipe up. Otherwise they can leave a residue, especially if you're cleaning resin. Um, but I will use one to clean down our paintings now. Um, I'm using stone coat countertop epoxy. Okay, just the countertop epoxy. It doesn't have any additions. It's not the art coat. Um, and if you do want extra durability, they have a top coat as well that you can use if you want. Uh, so I'm gonna put my heat gun over on my mixing table, or on my resin table over there, on the drying table. And I'm just gonna move the glitters out of the way for now, off to the side. And I will use the unicone resin uh, glitter today. Okay, so now we come to the fun bit. Um, I'm going to move my spinner out of my little puddle here, my puppy pool, so I can mix everything and not do myself a mischief. Um, all right. Let's just lift this out. And I'm just going to move this off to the side. Oh no. There goes all my try out liquid glass falling on the ground. I mean, really need to get that off the ground, to be honest. <laughs> okay, now we have a little bit of space in the middle here. So much room for activities, right? Okay, so then we're going to mix the resin up here. I'm going to move my heat gun over as well. And I'm gonna move that in a place that it's not going to get covered in resin. So just off to the side, but easily accessible. Okay, now for the fun bit, we get to mix resin. Actually, what I will do is I will change the camera over and mix it that way. All right, it's really, really odd doing a live video because everything has to be, you know, sort of in one place or another. Um, I am going to... I'm just going to move my 
drying stuff over and let's rotate oh, that's interesting let's rotate this camera okay where are we looking alrighty 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 risen up here cool can we see that got my drying table here um, I will spin my light around there we go alright this is cool are we good? All right, Clorox wipes also work. Yep, Pino Clean. Yep. Uh, can we use KS resin? You can use KS resin. That's another one I see recommended quite often. Um, so use whatever resin works for you. I know a lot of people that like KS resin because they have discount codes, um, but they're also another one of the highly recommended resin brands. Um, so yeah, whatever works for you, go ahead and use it if you like that result. Um, I love the results I get from Stone Coat. Alright, they're, uh, they're not canvases, they're tables. Um, have a look at the first video in this series, I believe I measured them. Um, and the first one is 80 centimeters by 60 centimeters, and the second one is 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. So they're old tables that I've sanded back um, and reused. Okay, so. Now comes the part where we're going to mix our resin. This all happens rather quickly once we've got our resin mixed and we want to get it on the canvases as soon as possible, uh, on the table so as soon as possible so it doesn't heat up in the cups. All right, so my first tip of the day is when you're applying gloves and you're working with resin, always apply two gloves. And the reason is if you need to take a glove off for any reason, you can just take the top one off and you've got one underneath ready to go that's not covered in resin. So what I'll do is I'll apply the glove and I'll pull the glove nice and long so it's covering most of my wrist. Then I'll take the second glove, slip it over one here, and I'll fluff out the bottom ring just so I've got something to grip onto if I need to change. And that way, if I need to pull the gloves off, um, I can just take that straight off here, okay? This trick has saved me many, many times. Um, also, I, I tend to get very sweaty hands when I work, so having that extra glove underneath means I'm not fighting with the moisture on my hands to get another glove on top, okay? So this is um, one of the most valuable tips I can tell you. Next, we're going to mix our resin. So, like I said, I'm going to mix it in this big cup. And now because we're going to mix our resin, we need to put the respirator on. So I'm going to put that on, just let me know if, um, if you can still hear me. Let me get this done. Alright, how do I sound? Am I your father? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> the um, the sound you're looking for from your uh, respirator, you should hear a little, um, uh, what do you call, uh, you should hear the filter going. So if I breathe into the microphone, you can hear the little plug that's in the filter. That means you've got an airtight seal and the air is only escaping from that plug. Okay, so that means you're breathing in clean air from your filters and out through that exhale valve. So your gloves are good if you hear that noise. Now we're going to mix our stone coat resin. So this is just a one-to-one -one resin. So I'm going to mix my part B first. Um, yeah, it's just a little rattle in the background, like, and that's exactly what it is, it's a rattle. Um, if you hear that, it means that your, your mask is working. Okay, if you don't, there's a problem. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to mix part B first, and here's another handy tip for you. Always, when you get your resin bottles, write the part letter on the top of your bottle, and the colour of the, the lid on the bottle. The amount of times that I've mixed up the lids, and... Uh, I've put them on the wrong bottle and gone, oh crap, and you have to wipe everything down. I can't count. So always write the, the letter on top 
that matches the bottle and write on the bottle the colour of the lid. Okay, so I'm measuring part B first and I'm going to measure 200 millilitres. Actually, I'm going to go 500 mils um, in total, so 250 millilitres for part B. And the reason I measure part B first is because it won't stick to the sides of the container as much as part A will. So when you add part A, it will sort of suspend itself in part B and it will mix a lot easier. It'll be easier to scrape, especially on cold, cooler days. Okay, so one to one. Oh, I can't believe this. So on the sides, it actually matches up perfectly. Uh, so now I'm going to add the rest of part A, which is the resin, up to my 500 milliliter line. Perfect. Okay, now, you can see I've got resin on my gloves. Now, if I leave that there and I start working with my resin, there's a chance that it may not set because that resin is unmixed on my hand. So I'm just going to take my Dettol wipe and wipe my hand nice and clean. Okay, this is where I could also take that glove off. Now, I just realized that I got ahead of myself and I've skipped a step. I haven't cleaned my canvas, my uh, wood panels. And I'm not going to. <laughs> so, um, I used to clean absolutely everything, even after I touched it with my hands. Lately, I haven't been bothering, and because I'm doing two coats of resin, the resin's going to be coated on my artwork. So, we'll see if my technique is going to get me in trouble later on, but I should be fine. Alright, so now I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to mix until I can't see any strands of resin. So just give me a sec while I mix this. Now I stop, and then I reverse the direction of the drill. Always hold on to your container as well. Don't ever let that go. I have done so, and it's disastrous. Okay, so now I'm going to leave my drill over my drying mat so it can drip onto there. And I'm going to grab my popsicle stick, my tongue depressor, and I'm going to press it against the side of the container and scrape down any resin that may remain on this. I'm also going to scrape the bottom and just give this a manual mix for a minute or two. So you can see that the drill makes very short work of mixing your resin. However, it does introduce a lot of bubbles. So I don't know if you can see that, but my container is full of bubbles and it's very difficult to see through. Now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that resin to not have any strands or threads of unmixed resin in there. As long as I can't see that, I'm pretty happy. Okay, bubbles we can take care of in the next step. Cuposaurus cup. Okay. Um, I will have to look at that. So the other thing that I've seen people using, it looks like a drum sander, so it's on the end of the thing, and it's got little flaps of sandpaper. It's similar to what I've seen others mix with, and it doesn't create that vortex which introduces air bubbles. So that's something that I am going to look into in the near future. Um, so normally what I would do is give this a second mix with the drill. I'm just going to leave this 
somewhere that it's not going to get covered in hair and dirt and dust. So just grab the drill again. Okay, so normally I'll do this all next to my artwork, so whatever is dripping is going to drip straight onto the artwork. Um, but we're not doing that today. Uh, now, I'm just going to detour for a second. We're going to change what we're looking at because now it's time to apply the resin to the table. So we get this up the way. Alright. Okay. So I'm just trying to get the lighting correct. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So, let's look back to this one so I can see the comments. Alrighty. So now we have our first cup of mixed resin. I'm going to do this one first. Right? So before I pour that on, I know I said we weren't going to clean it, I'm just going to give it a wipe with a paper towel to get any dust off it. So just around the top and sides. And I'll do this one while I'm here. What you could use is a rolled up roll of chucks cloth. That would also work and that's easy to use. Uh, that's what they use to remove uh, resin dust after sanding. Okay, we're ready. So now we're going to apply the resin to our surface. Now when I'm working with resin, I like to be able to walk all the way around my pieces so that I can get to all of the sides and see it from all different angles. So I'm going to pour this straight into the middle, but I'm not going to pour the whole lot on at once. Then I'm going to go all the way around the edges. I'm going to save a little bit of this to mix with our pigments. Just around there. And like that. Right. Now the fun bit, you get to play with your hands. So I'll keep that off to the side. And then with my gloved hand, I'm going to smooth that resin across the entire painting. So it doesn't matter whether this is a, a table, a canvas, um, you know, whatever surface you've poured on or painted on, it makes no difference. You're just going to use your hand to glide the resin all the way across the surface. Now, the important thing with resin, it will not flow where it hasn't already touched. Okay? Resin will not go where resin hasn't flown. So it's very important that you've always got like a ball of resin when you're moving your hand. It makes like a wave. And I'll bring the camera a little bit closer to the second one to show you. Uh, it makes like a wave in front of it. I use that wave to cover every square inch of the canvas before I take it down the sides. Okay? So I'm just moving that around with my hand, getting it all the way to the edges, and then I'm going to drop it down the side. Now this way is the best way that I've found to do resin, because it's tactile. Your hand will get stuck where there's no resin. So if your hand's getting stuck, you need to apply some resin there. Okay. And use your eyeballs as well. I can see the side where there is resin, it's nice and shiny, and where there's no resin, it's a, a little bit dull, it's a little bit matte. So here we go with that. Okay. And then for the other side, I'm going to walk around. It doesn't matter if I go on to this one, because we're going to do this one at the same time. So there's nothing to be scared about with this. It's the same as doing smaller pieces, you're just mixing up more resin at a time. Now, the danger that comes with this, and there is a danger, is if your resin is not the best, if it's a low quality resin, having too much resin in the cup at once can cause it to flash cure. So flash curing is when it sets instantly, generates a lot of heat, a lot of smoke, and can be very, very scary. So always check what the maximum mixing volume for your resin is um, before you mix it up. So I know that Stone Coat, you can mix litres of this up at a time in gallons, um, so 500 milliliters is not going to be a problem. Now, once I have all of the resin on here, I'm going to use my hand, and I try and keep one hand as clean as possible. I'm going to use my hand, and I'm going to chop it. So I'm just tapping the surface. And what this is doing is it's breaking up the surface tension of the resin 
so that it can self-level and flow much better. So I've got plenty of resin down here on this end, so doing that. Uh, this method also helps to reintegrate the resin and mix it back together with itself in case you have any unmixed uh, parts. Okay, so I noticed that this corner doesn't look like it got as much resin as everywhere else. I'm just going to apply some there and again tap it in. And this should mean that we've now covered the entire surface with resin. Okay, now with the leftovers, we're going to take this over to our mixing table and I'm going to add some pigments. So I'm just scraping the resin off my fingers into there and now I'll remove this board. Okay, so I'm putting this over here and let's mix in. So I'm just going to do this off camera so it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to mix in a little bit of that Hecate glitter and some TLP comet. I didn't want to add too much and here I am adding way too much. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. Now the reason I didn't want to add too much, I don't want this to be the main feature of the table. We still want everyone to be able to see the colour and the beauty in the paint underneath rather than just glitter. So just gonna give this a quick mix and I'll show you on here. So this is what we end up with. We end up with like this translucent milky white glittery powder okay you probably can't see it because the the light is very glary on top of it so let's see if i can move it underneath if it'll focus this close and i'm also doing this with the delay on the camera so please bear with me let's see if that actually works there we go you get the idea okay really lovely uh then i'm going to put on another one of those gloves that i've had set aside that straight over the top of the other one and there you go look how easy that is to slip those on and off okay i don't have to worry about my hands being slippery and then over here i'm going to apply it now, actually i'm going to heat gun this first we're going to get most of the bubbles out and then we're going to apply our glitter so i might as well just do it from this side high heat Highest temperature and highest thermal. I'm just working my way up and down the, the resin. the surface bubbles you're not getting all of them out then i'm going to use my heat gun oh my chef's torch sorry and i'm going to go over this again long sweeping strokes okay oh you know what i didn't do i didn't mix in the unicone glitter oh god i'm stupid it's okay it's all right i'm still doing another coat so i can add the glitter to the top coat i'm not too stressed about this not being food safe um, because you're not putting raw food on the tables at all so the glitter in the second coat should be absolutely fine you do not want to add glitter on top of this because it will chunk up and look terrible. So now I'm going to add this just in a couple of places along here. There's a couple of places where we've got that really nice pale rosé TLP in here. So I'm going to add that in there. 
then I'm going to go in some of these places where there's a lot of black. And this is going to add some dimension to those places where there is a lot of black. So I pop in this corner particularly. And you guys can't see it, but it looks very stripy, very liney at the moment. But it won't in a minute when we blow this out with our heat gun and get the bubbles out with the chef's torch. Now, if you wanted really nice defined lines, you could do this at a later stage once the resin has started to set and it will hold its shape a lot better. It will be nice and stringy. Um, if you want this to blend in like I do and be sort of wispy and free, do it now and apply heat. Okay, getting there. Okay, I'm going to pull it there. Um, if you have applied glitter to it and you want blank spaces, what you can do is apply clear resin into those blank, into that uh, glittered resin on here and it will create a negative space. Okay, so I'm going to blow this out and then for the second one I'll bring you down nice and close so you can see what I'm doing. Did I just accidentally dip the tip of my heat gun into the hot resin at 600 degrees? Yes, yes I did. Was that scary? Absolutely it was. Note to self, don't get too close to the resin when you're blowing it around. <laughs> okay, so now what I've got is I've got a really nice distribution of glitter and I just did that to break up the lines from where we've poured it on. So I'm just using my finger now to do that a little bit further so it doesn't look so concentrated and a bit more wispy. Okay, now because this is a fluid, it will move, it will self-level and it will change. So it's not going to stay exactly how I put it and that is perfectly fine. Um, part of the reason I like using resin and doing this sort of stuff in the resin stage is because it moves and it shifts and it's unpredictable and it's going to give you a nice natural looking um, addition to your artwork. So no real rhyme or reason. You could do this with um, a galaxy or a nebula and just blow it out a little bit and then use your finger to make an aurora. I'm really happy with this side. Um, and now I'm just going to come around and have a look at it from a different angle. Okay, this angle's fine. It's making some nice swirls and eddies in here. And like I said before, if there's areas where you're not happy with how it's formed, just use a bit of clear resin, and that will sort of push the coloured resin out of the way. Now, after this, I don't want to use any more heat from the heat gun, chef's torch only. 
So you just want to put bubble, you don't want to spread this anymore. I'm really happy with this now. And it looks wonderful. And I'll bring the, well, I can't even bring the camera down to show you afterwards because it's attached to my computer. Um, but what I can do is I can upload a video of how this looks into the Facebook group afterwards. And it looks spectacular. Okay, so that's one of these done. Now what I'm going to do with this cup, I'm going to tip it upside down and I'm going to let the resin flow out of that because I'll reuse that cup to mix. Now I take off these two blocks and we're ready to go for our second one of resin. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that process. Um, does anyone have any questions? And I just realised I'm not in live chat, I'm in top chat, so I'm sorry if I've missed your questions and um, <laughs> haven't answered, I, I apologise. Uh, does anyone have any questions so far? Have you learned something so far? <laughs> Is the more important question, I guess. So just got my second gloves on and now I'm going to go over the top of that with my torch. Do I just move that out of the way? something here that I'm not a fan of. So I'm just going to use the mixing stick to swirl a pattern here. So looking at the TLP Comet from different angles, you get a really lovely bright red from one angle and then you get this deep gold on another. It's absolutely phenomenal. Okay, so I'm going to mix up my second batch of resin now. And I'm, like I said before, I'm going to use this same cup. So because this is already mixed resin, um, it, it doesn't matter if you're adding more to it. Uh, it will just extend the cure time of whatever's in the cup. So this is a practice that I've been doing for a little while now. Um, haven't had any issues with it. So I mixed up 500 millilitres of resin last time. I'm only going to do 400 this time because the table is slightly smaller. So we've got part B first. And part A. So 200 milliliters of each. Oh, concentrating so hard. Um, and when you're mixing your resin, always get down at eye level to see what you're doing. Okay, so I had my, so Karen asks, I had my first lot of amine blush this week on a second coat of resin in big humidity. How far down do I have to sand and will artists you mean that I can do less? Um, so I've never experienced amine blush, uh, but for those who don't know, amine blush is when moisture gets into your resin and it causes like a, a blush that goes over the top. It's, it makes everything blurry. Um, so like I said, I've never experienced it, so I don't know, but I would I, I would say a light sand is all that you would need to get rid of that because it is a surface thing. <clears throat> if it's in your resin, I don't think there's much you can do about it. Like I don't know if it goes all the way through the layer. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what you could do if it was actually through the entire layer of resin other than sand it through the back. Um, Artisu 
won't help that. It's just glitter, so it's not going to help. You know, if you put glitter in there, it's not going to help you in any way to hide it because it'll still be translucent. All right, I'm just going to mix up this second batch. This batch is ready to go. So again, I'm just using my mixing stick. Sorry, it's a bit boring just watching my drying table over there. Um, again, all part of doing live videos. So I've got my resin mixed. I've just used my mixing stick to go around the sides. I'm just going to grab another cup, which I'll pour some resin straight into for the glitters. Oh no, this one has a hair in it. Yucky. My cup's got a hair in it. Why well, get out? Let's go. That was gross. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the cup had a little bit of a hair in it. I just used my stick to pull that out. Okay. Now, uh, is the glitter in it? No, Karen, thank you so much for reminding me. Uh, no, I did not put the glitter in this one. Um, so, I'm going to put the glitter in this one. Alright. So, to put the glitter in, all I need, and this I will show you, all you need for 400 millilitres of resin is this teeny 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 tiny amount of glitter because I'm working on a black background as well um, because I'm working on black uh, you want less glitter in there okay um, so this is how, how much it is it's less than a quarter or, or an eighth of a teaspoon um, because this will overpower the black you want it to add an accent not be the main feature okay so I just dab that in and I'll give that a stir with my stir stick just to incorporate it and then when we do our little mixing thing on the table itself we'll incorporate that a bit further. Um, so while I'm over here I might as well add the other two bits of the other glitters I'm going to use if I can undo them. I now have resin on my hands. So, the other two that I'm using, like I said, are apple blossom and what's this one? luminous alabaster. So, two different types of glitter. I don't know if they're going to show up or if they're going to look exactly the same. Yeah, when you're doing things live and you have to perform in front of an audience, all your logic just goes out the window. <laughs> but look, there have been times where I've forgotten it and, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I've actually decided, I think I want to put a little bit of this little piggy glisten in the, um, in the little accent bit as well. So again, just a teeny tiny amount. To give it some interference colour and that should be. I'm going to give that a little mix and then I'm going to come over and then I'll bring my camera down so that you can see what I'm doing more clearly. Okay, so here I have my mixed up colour. 
and this one I'm going to keep off to the side and I'm just going to use this to top up any bits that I think I may have missed or may, may need a little bit more zhuzhing around on here but I think I'm pretty happy with how that one is so I'll just leave it up here with my other mixed resin and I'll bring this one over and then let's get you down nice and close to the table okay so this is as far as it will go actually let's bring the table to you so I can still move around that side hey waiting for the delay to catch up on the screen there. Uh, just quickly switch over to my studio program. There we go. Alright, perfect. Looking good. Now we'll do this one. So grab the resin and you should be able to see how many bubbles are in this. Um, it is not clear by any stretch of the imagination. So let's go right round the edges here. Okay, and as always, leave just a little bit of clear in your container so that you can touch up any areas that you may have missed prior. And you instantly see the transformation from, you know, a dull sort of dried color to oh my god that looks like it's underwater amazing resin finish so we start from the center join our edges here that's going to fill in that whole center bit and then we can work our way around the edge so this is the wave that i was talking about you make that wave with your finger that sort of follows in front and you want to take it almost right to the edge, just not quite over it. And you do that all the way around. So you get to here, and then I'll come to this side to do this way. Okay. And then you want to find where all of that resin weight is, and just sort of distribute it evenly. So I know that there was no weight over here on this edge. Um, so I'm just going to push that further towards the center so that it's all sort of got a chance to flow evenly. And now I'll go around the sides and edges. So just using my hand, grabbing some resin off the top and pushing it down onto the side. Right, what's happening? My dad just sent me a, a bundle of sleeves that cut from a long sleeve shirt. It clips in there, my arms are protected. Yeah, protecting yourself is... um is very important with this especially if you're doing what i'm doing and leaning over a piece bigger pieces are a lot harder to resin um, and i do have quite hairy arms so getting arm hair in things is a real hazard um, so yeah i would i would be um taking advantage of clean wrapping my arms up but i just don't bother it's easier to just pluck it out when you see it and you know do another coat and hope that you don't get one in the second coat <laughs> Um, keeping pets away from your resin is super important as well. Don't ever let them into your art room. Um, and I'm also running an air purifier 24-7. Um, so I have no dust in this room. This is a dust-free environment. Um, it is currently off, uh, making me a liar because we had a blackout. So uh, it means we lost power and the air purifier doesn't come back on, unfortunately. So I'll turn that on as soon as I leave to make sure that's sucking up the dirt and not my resined pieces okay so this is now all covered i can feel that it's nice and slippery along the edges and sides and now we're going to chop so normally what you would do is you would use a chopping brush a nylon chopping brush um, to do this if you're not sure have a look on stone coat countertops website um, i'm just going to use my hand and this is going to break that surface tension in the resin to help it self level give us a nice even poke. So I'm just using this opportunity to pick up resin from parts where I think it's a lot thicker and move it to areas where it feels a little bit thinner. 
Now, it could also be that it's not perfectly level anymore. I may have pushed on it while I was working. So what I will do is when I do the second coat of resin, I'll actually flip this 180 degrees so that any unlevel parts will sort of even themselves out and I'll still get a nice perfectly flat top. So I'm going to wipe off the bulk of this resin from my hand. You can wipe it back into your container to reuse or I just scrape it on the sides. And then we're going to take off this top glove. So again, let's see. So if you get it properly, you should be able to grab that nice and easily. I'm just going to chuck this into my discard pile over here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Put it back to my bank scan. Alright, so now it's time to use the heat gun. So I'm going to walk the long way around this time because I moved it closer than the USB cable in my way. Um, and we're going to use the heat gun. Highest setting, pop all these bubbles, okay? Now, can you guys see the bubbles there? Watch as they disappear. If you don't see them, you'll see the change in the resin. Now we go in with our torch. Now, if your resin has a lot of bubbles, I recommend doing the sides as well. And while I'm here, I'm going to do the surface of this one again. just to remove any bubbles from that other painting. Alright, this is looking really, really fantastic. And now we're going to apply the glittery bits. Okay, so I'll come around this side again. Right, just see if we go to the questions and comments. Okay, so did you see the bubbles being popped as I was using the heat gun? Um, you see a lot of them get popped with the heat gun, and then as soon as you use the chef's torch, you're like, oh my god, there are so many more. <laughs> Alright, so now it's time to add our accents, which I'm really excited about. Now, I can also see that there's a little tiny dot here that didn't get filled in. My paint did have a lot of bubbles in it, so I've got little black spots. Um, but once you put the resin on, you don't know that they're bubbles, you just think they're part of the artwork. So now, let's add our blue-green colour shifting resin here with the glisten in there and the glitter. Now this one is definitely not as vibrant as Comet which is great because with this one we want something a little bit more subtle. Alright, I still want plenty of it but this is like the layer on top. Now I am really happy with this piece. There's a layer here that changes colour um, from blue to pink to purple and it looks like a nebula and it looks stunning so I think I may actually keep this one for myself. Might turn it into a coffee table or something. Alright, a little bit in the middle. Share the love. A 
over on the edge and a little bit more here. I don't want to mess up this part. So I'll leave that for the moment. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now we go with the heat gun again. So you have to remember every time you add more resin on top, you're introducing more bubbles. So heat gun this time. And I'm just going to use it on low heat. Oh, sorry, low fan. Just so I can move it around a little bit more. Oh, stop it. High heat. High fan. So now I'm going to use this glove, this hand, because this glove is um, still double glove, whereas the other one isn't. Now this has given the most amazing nebulous look to it, so it looks like a space nebula, which is exactly what I want. Oh, it looks phenomenal. I've kept the integrity of this little area here, I haven't overdone it. But I am just going to bring some of this back in line and just make some swirls and eddies here. That's not as concentrated. You can just make some little patterns in the in the pigment. And I am very, very happy with that. I love how when you swirl your finger through the interference pigment, it actually, the resin picks it up and it gives you different angles of the same pigment. So in the case of um, Glisten here that I've used in this one, it's throwing green and blue at the same time. damn cool. Okay, so I'm going to come around this side again, I'm going to grab my chef's torch, give it one final fortune. This is the time to pick out any little bits that you may see. Now, this is the crucial step. Go around to both of your pieces. So now I'm looking at both artworks. And I'm going to pick out any blemishes that I may find. Okay? So uh, before I do that, what I'll do is I'll take the camera off and try and show you what this looks like. Hopefully it picks up a little bit of that detail in the glitter. Um, so let me bring this back, I'm going to bring the table back so my USB cord reaches. Okay, this is fine. And let's see, let's take this off. 
Tá, Fury. There you go. You can see that beautiful glitter in there. I'll show you my favourite part. It's this part right here. So from this angle, it looks blue and purple. Oh, I can't get you around enough. Um, but from other angles, it looks pink and green. Oh, this is really difficult doing this um, backwards. But you can see the glisten, like the parts that's actually in the resin, like here, over the black. You can see that beautiful pigment. Um, so it looks like a separate layer because it is. Okay? So, that is that. Now we're going to, like I said, let me just shift you up. I'm going to shift this back this way. Now, what I'm doing is getting down nice and low and looking at my piece from different angles. And I've got my studio lights in the background here, casting light across my surface. So I can see any bumps, lumps, hairs, anything that may have fallen in here. Now, ideally, I will not come back in here until tomorrow afternoon and possibly even the day after. Because even though um, we may not have much dust in here, um, tomorrow it may be set, but we can still get things stuck to the resin even if it's just set. Um, it can act like glue, so... Just have to be careful of that. Big chunk of glitter there. Right, so one more pass with the torch. I'm going to try not to put my arm over the top of this now. Try and fail. Okay, these are done. Now, usually what I will do is I will hightail it out of here as quick as I can and not look back. I won't come back in here again. Okay, but I have a little um, special feature, I guess, um, to show you what I do with any leftover resin. I'm going to quickly pull these out of the way. And I'm going to stay as clear from those as I possibly can. Uh, and I'm actually going to move them back so I've got more space to walk around on the other side. And try not to, let's see, I might as well turn on my thing on here. Air purifier. Okay. Just double check again. So, when you're working with resin, you have the window of the open time to work with it. So if your open time is one hour, you've got an hour to come and play with this, okay? And that's the time it will stay fluid enough that you can move it around with a heat gun. After that, it becomes a lot harder, but you can do a lot more techniques with it um, in terms of making stripes and striations and all sorts of fun stuff with it. Um, now, the other thing that I'm looking for on the edges here is making sure that any holes or gaps in the side are filled, okay? So... Let's spin this around and I'll show you what I do with leftover resin. So I've got a little bit of that um, glitter mix left up and I've got a little bit of this one. Um, where do I put them all? Um, so normally I have silicon moulds on my bench waiting for me. And I didn't think that far ahead today. So we're just going to make a little tray. I'm going to put that here, fill it with the clear resin. Number one, make sure your mold's clean first. <laughs> um, this will probably just be for my place. And I definitely don't have enough resin mix up to fill this mold. But what I do is I leave this to sit here. Um, I'll put this to the side once it's cured. And then next time I work with resin, any leftovers will go in here. Then we've got some of this Hecate mix from the blue one. 
and then we've got some from the red one as well. So I'll just pour that in. And we're basically going to make something out of nothing. You know, we don't ever want to throw it away. So this red resin has already thickened up quite considerably. If you can make something with your leftovers, you've got something else to sell, you haven't wasted it. I'm just pushing it in, swirling it around, making something look interesting. Making a pattern, and then I can come back in with black resin underneath this, using some resin paste to make something really cool. Now, once I'm done, to dispose of everything, cup straight in the bin, and mixing sticks in the bin, then I'll take off one glove first so that I don't get any resin on my wrist, second glove off, and then take a Dettol wipe or a baby wipe, whatever you're using, and just wipe your arms down. Uh, this is an important step to get any resin residue off your arms that you may not know about. Um, I have had resin cure in my arms because I forgot about it or I've been sticky and not realised. Um, that's never fun. So now that I've got my little mould here, I also need to just torch it lightly. And for that I have a lighter. So this is a long neck lighter. Never use a chef's torch in a mould because it will melt your silicon. Um, and if it doesn't melt your silicon, um, it can use the silicon to the resin. So you just want to go nice and slow just to pop those bubbles. And of course be careful not to get your lighter in the resin. There we go. Okay, and that's done. So uh, when you're working with resin as well, always, always keep your mask on until you leave the room. Very important there. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so um, Karen says she's really fussy um, with her resin. Um, Liz says she doesn't always open the window. Um, okay, I make teddy bears. Da -da -da -da. Mitchell and Mitchell are going to use them. Okay, so um, in terms of wearing a mask and gloves, um, but not opening a window, um, I don't open a window anymore either because that changes the uh, temperature, changes the humidity, everything inside the room. Um, so I've stopped opening windows as well. Um, the mask is enough as long as you're working in the area with your mask on, ventilation isn't an issue. Okay, it's always better to have ventilation so that you know, all that sort of nasty gases can escape. But once your resin has cured and it's been about 24 hours, um, it no longer becomes an issue. Uh, it becomes what we call inert, which means it's not going to react anymore and it's not going to be dangerous to you either. Um, when I do come back in the next day, I do leave my door open for a couple of minutes just to let any of that gas escape, but otherwise not an issue. Um, Karen, so she's really fussy with her resin. Don't be. Seriously, don't be. If you're adding glitter to it, who cares? Um, it's not worth picking your brain and going insane trying to pick out every single little hair because what happens when you're bending over, picking out that little hair, another one's falling in somewhere else and you don't notice it until it's dry. And then you sand it and you do the same process again and another little hair falls in. So stop being so picky and stop being so pedantic. You don't need to be, okay? Just do it. The customer's not going to notice that tiny little bump. Um, and if they do, you say, it's a handmade product. What do you expect? Okay. Um, if you are really that fussy, do a second coat. Um, do a second coat. Apply the same rules, but you can't be perfect every single time. 
and Joyce finally says, what can you use to clean the surface of these? Um, so I've used Windex, I've been using detergent and water, I've been using um, Pino Clean, I've used uh, hand sanitizer, disinfectant, um, all sorts of things. It doesn't damage the surface. Um, it's going to be just fine. So don't stress too much about um, using specific cleaners or buying specific cleaners. Um, resin holds up really well to most chemicals. Just try not to use any um, strong acids like vinegar uh, or anything stronger than vinegar. Um, and no bleach. If you find that your resin is stained, so uh, because I own a coffee shop and I've had coffee on these tables, uh, if you don't clean the coffee off right away, it will stain it. If you find you've got a stain on the surface, 99% um, isopropyl alcohol will get that straight out. You won't have any issues with that. Okay? Uh, so... Uh, Karen says um, she's off to start standing outside in her PJs. <laughs> awesome, Karen. Um, thanks for answering my question. It's good to know I'm not the only one who found the open window can be problematic. Yeah, it definitely can. Um, so look, it all comes down to do what what you find works, do what's useful to you, and you know, create your own process. Um, at the end of the day, I'm just a guide just here to tell you what works for me um, and what works for me has happened like just happens to have helped many other people as well so hopefully you've learned a lot from this little session if you're watching it live if you're watching it later um, please any questions you may have don't forget to ask them in the comments um, i'm going to wrap this up now so i'm not putting any extra hair and dust into my tables um, and then i'll let this cure for 24 hours i'll come back tomorrow and apply a second clear coat of resin so they're food safe um, and these will be ready in two or three weeks to flip over and we'll order some legs and attach the legs. Um, and these will be fully functional tables ready to sell. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, stay tuned for the next video. I will let you know as usual um, in the groups um, and I'll see you then. So thanks for joining me and bye. See you later.